Perfect. So, so first of all, just thank, thank, thank you, Sergi, thank the, the organizers for the opportunity of talk a little bit about the BioXL Center of Excellence. Uh, the title reads Software Availability for Computational Biomedicine. The real title of the Center of Excellence is for biomolecular research more in general. But as you will see, actually, there is a lot of the work is basically focused in computational biomedicine. So that, that makes uh, a lot of sense anyway. Uh, the idea of, uh, if I, uh, yeah. So uh, the, the way we see the, 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 the word excellence in the, in the title, Center of Excellence, actually is split in three, in three main pillars. I, I'm just using the official dissemination slides from from the projects so the team main, uh, three main pillars are basically the the excellence in software so the idea is to make sure we have uh, the necessary activities to to improve the quality of the software or to have at least a, a collection of software that is uh, fulfilling the most relevant needs in the in the field and that software is not only good in terms of uh, performance but also good in terms of uh, scientific outcome and also to set the best practices how to do that so far. Second pillar would be the usability. So actually it's not all just doing calculations but making sure that everybody is able to access those calculations in an easy way and to perform complex activities in, in the life science domain uh, uh, based on uh, that another software but in a, in a way that is uh, easy to easy to deploy it easy to access it and easy to to use for the for the normal scientific activities and also uh, following a little bit of the concept of competence center that was discussed uh, explained in the previous talk is also support part of this so not only training in the classical way but also uh, uh, a kind of single entry portal for people doing these things in a in, uh, in the in the field, so uh, the the general strategy of this of Bioxcel has been Bioxcel is in is in the second edition, so actually it's started uh, the first uh, call of the Center of Excellence for the first three years, and now we are in the second stage, and basically this this work started at the beginning, and we are just continuing the what we are. But the, in general, the the idea what we have done is to put together things that exist, solutions that exist already. We are not inventing much. We do some things, new, new things, but basically we're uh, uh, taking benefit of what was already in the market when we started. And put together this together with services, traditional services, training, customization, consultancy, and at the end to have a final, a final, I would say, customer that is both academy and industry. We are not, of course, as it was said already, uh, academy is a, is, uh, is a strong, uh, a strong consumer of this kind of activities. But industry, especially in the in the biomedical design, uh, biomedical domain, is very important, especially pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies and biotech companies that are working a lot in this in these fields. So the idea is to use, as I said, uh, solutions that exist, improve those solutions, make those solutions easy to handle, and uh, add to them a series of traditional services that are in the, in the different domains. Uh, so far, just a, a quick quick list. We are basic uh, the, the 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 main software, the main codes of the BioXL uh, projects are uh, one and uh, trying to cover the different uh, activities that are normal in, in biomolecular simulations in biomolecular research. First of all, is uh, molecular dynamic simulations, and we we are on board uh, Gromax from uh, the, the KTH and others, that is probably the main code in molecular simulation, at least the ones made in Europe. It's a free, it's a free access, it's not a commercial, and it has a, a strong uh, group of uh, users already existing at the, at the beginning. Uh, this is for the MD. Uh, the more uh, traditional modeling uh, we have Haddock from the Utrecht University that is a, a kind of hub for integration of different sources of information that uh, Haddock started in the nuclear magnetic resonance domain to uh, get information from the experiment in NMR to uh, gather uh, structural information in macromolecules. But now is a, is a complete suite of uh, modeling that uh, incorporates information from experience, not only NMR, but other uh, sources of information, like cryo em for instance, and also bioinformatics, pure bioinformatics predictions, and uh, perhaps 
the most relevant the outcome of Haddock is the, the prediction of complexes between the prediction of interactions, the prediction of complexes between uh, between proteins. Uh, in the more electronic level, we have also QM, quantum mechanics, but in by the CP2K software, by the Julik people, is a QM, uh, but not pure QM in terms of Phi-Xl. We are more interested in the interface between QM and molecular mechanics, so the one that allows uh, quantum mechanics to be usable, uh, fully usable in the in the domain of, uh, of proteins, for instance, or enzyme, enzyme mechanisms. And also we have a, a last one, by Mark De Roop and the Mass Plan, that is a free energy calculation. This is a key issue. Is This is not a separated software, actually this works on top of Gromax, but this is a key a strategy to, to get uh, free energy calculations that are uh, good enough to be uh, comparable, comparable with, the, with the experiment. This is the of main importance, for instance, in drug design, where you are uh, basically trying to predict how is the activity of a new drug or new molecule even before that molecule actually exists in the, in the market. These are the main the main codes we are uh, using in BioXL. But as I said, this is a second uh, pillar that is the usability, and for that we are basically changing a little bit or contributing, I would say, to change a little bit the way of all these codes are normally used. These are typical codes that are running the common line with complex setups and uh, people do zone scripts to run it. And the idea here is that to make this more, I don't like to say that, but it's probably the, the, the best expression, more, more uh, bioinformatics way. Uh, so we use workflows, we want to use workflows, so it's things that are uh, modules that could be interoperable. And for that we have basically invented a new, a new concept that is what we call the BioXL building block, that actually is a kind of a wrapper, actually technically it's very simple. It's, it's a, a strategy to wrap the real codes in three layers. The first uh, code is just, uh, the, the, the inner layer is just the code in the original uh, in, in the original way that is uh, organized. There is in the middle a kind of interoperability layer that the compatibility layer that is making that interoperable with other codes. The idea is that in the inner side, we keep the original uh, application exactly as it is. We don't have to change anything. Authors, developers have, don't have to change anything. And basically we build a layer in the middle that translates what that application uh, needs to something that is a common data model, a common uh, set of uh, data and types of data. And at the end, there is a, an extra uh, adapter that allows that to be run in different places. So the, the, the whole thing in here is that uh, we will have a number of, uh, of uh, tools. Actually, there is a huge list that I'm, of course, not, not reading he here today, but there is a whole list of uh, modules that perform the most uh, normal operations. This has been uh, built, this list has been built uh, following some use cases, some specific use cases, so those are real operations that people do in the normal life. And uh, with this, we can construct uh, complex workflows that basically takes the most uh, benefit from the, from the codes that are, that are inside. Uh, the important thing about this approach is that you can just change whatever is in the, in change a new version, change a new, even change the, completely the code for a, dif a different one that has a similar uh, functionality. And then you can keep the outside of this block and alter it. So that block still works in the same place, in the same workflows, even if you change what is, in the, what is inside. So uh, as I said, there is a full list of that that is growing. And also uh, one thing that is important and that is the bioinformatics-like thing that I was referring to, is that actually with this technology, we can enter in the full ecosystem of systems of deploying that are normally used and becoming really popular in, in bioinformatics. This is very much uh, feeling from the Elixir uh, infrastructure uh, experience. And from that, basically, uh, blogs, we can address things like uh, generating actual, uh, automatically containers, either Docker or, or perhaps Singularity that is more suitable for HPC. But also we can just generate virtual machines. We can just use the software as it is, uh, back with uh, Conda environments, and uh, chain that with uh, Jupyter Network. So with the same initial code, all this uh, deployment approach is almost automatic. So people don't, leak, don't need to uh, bother about how deploy, how to install, how to make installation suite for that because this is uh, basically deployed automatically. Does, uh, the, the end of that of that is that actually we can just generate a workflow 
as complex as something like that, run that workflow in a laptop, and eventually this could be without almost any uh, changes, for instance, using in this case PyComs, that is the product from BSC, uh, from BSC for uh, automatic schedule, scheduling. Or, uh, we can just uh, run the same thing. This is a good example because it's probably one of the largest that we have done in BioXL so far. We are planning a new one where this, uh, this is a simulation the simulation of uh, 200 annotated mutations of uh, one, uh, one enzyme, pyruvate kinase, is a large one, uh, almost half a million atoms. And for that, in a single uh, calculation, we mobilize in a sustained way, as you can see in the, in the, in the, in the user CPU, uh, about uh, 40,000 cores of, BA, of uh, BSC Maranostrum move for. So this is the kind of thing that can be done, but for me, the important thing of this approach is that this same workflow can be developed in a simple laptop. And once this works, we can just scale up this to the to the large uh, to the larger system. Uh, this is uh, the the approach on usability, and we have developing a number of use cases for that. As you may see, these are the main use cases in BioXL2, the second edition. That you see that more or less this is our these are typical, uh, I would say. Uh, life science uh, kind of uh, operations. I should say that in this case, these are not just demonstrators, these are real scientific cases that will uh, basically eventually have a scientific outcome that could be published normally, but these are gonna be using the technology and the way of thinking of the BioXL Center of Excellence. Um, very, very briefly, we have a modeling of the interaction with antibodies and antigens and the predictions of new antibodies. This is based on the, on the Haddock uh, series of, uh, of uh, software in combination with Gromax. We have uh, people in Haddock you know, just uh, at the level of testing different kinds of uh, software, how they perform, how they uh, scale up in, 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 in HPC environments. Uh, the use case that we're more involved with at BSC is the rational drug design, that basically we are ba we're using the EGFR technology, uh, protein, that is the epidermal growth factor receptor, is a known target in chemotherapy. And what is uh, relevant is in this, uh, a protein is that different mutations, the mutations that appear in different people, uh, actually uh, uh, changes the way that the drugs affecting EGFR uh, are able to, 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 to work. So actually some mutations just reduce, make the, the, the patient resistant to that treatment. Some of the mutations make that patient more sensitive to that treatment. This is very difficult to uh, predict in in general, because actually we need the, 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 the personal uh, appetite, the personal set of mutations of, uh, of the individual. We're doing that basically combining Gromax and by, by building blocks, as, as we're uh, saying, with the PMX that uh, makes uh, this, the, well, I'm not going to enter in the details, but the each PMX calculation, each Delta G calculation implies uh, somehow 200 different simulations, short simulations, but 200 ones. I, we, we are planning a, a huge uh, analysis. I'm sure that Sergi will not leave, give me Maranostrum for uh, two Maranostrum for two days, but this is the kind of approach that actually makes this, uh, these uh, calculations going near the pre or near the pre scale level. So actually this is something that is feasible, that will work, but eventually, will work when we have the, 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 the amount of resources to do it. But this is something that actually is already tested that has been uh, building and uh, has been built right now. Uh, there is another more on the quantum chemistry, but a few because I'm not have much to tell on that. This is the work by the Julik uh, people that is working in the quantum mechanics of fluorescent proteins that are proteins that are usually used in the lab as markers, of histological markers to see how the proteins move from one place to another in the cell. These are a combination of quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics in a, in a, very, in a, in a very specific way. So these are the, 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 the use cases. As you may see, most of them are uh, clearly oriented to uh, health or to biomedicine. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is not just software, not just usability software, but it's also service. And we have a full the part of the project, number of people that is involved in support and consultancy. The idea is competence building, 
so I don't have to discover that because the first talk was uh, all about this concept. And the idea is to become a kind of competence center in the, uh, the field of uh, molecular, uh, biomolecular simulations. As I said, not only academic, also industrial users. Also, we are uh, targeting band software vendors, so with they, they basically integrate in our, in our way of thinking and uh, resource providers. And the idea is, again, uh, give a kind of a, uh, a one, one, one stop portal to the people doing biomolecular simulations to be able to address all these things with the, with the technology that exists. Uh, we do a lot of training. The training is shaped out of the, the needs of the community. So we're not just making webinars what we really like, but we are creating a kind of competency profile. So in a way that we decide how is the user that we want to target. Uh, some are going to be uh, non-experienced users and have some kind of uh, address and others will be much experienced users that have uh, need different needs. Once we have that uh, competency uh, really map, we basically generate uh, training that is on the, on the, on the idea of uh, filling the gap the gaps that we can find. We have done a lot of uh, uh, webinars since the first BioXL. It's about up to 50 different. You can just find them in the in the website of webinars. They are completely, completely accessible right now. And you have things that go from just, uh, this is the last one, that is, well, not, this is the next one, but this is in theory next next month. Hopefully it's a webinar, so no, no problem with the, with the technology. And the idea is, uh, this is a very, a really uh, uh, specialized webinar because it's just combining IOEM with molecular dynamics following density simul uh, guide simulations, what is a really specialized item. We have on the other end just uh, webinars on software uh, best practices, how we build and maintain software. Uh, this is, uh, comes very much from the experience in Gromax that is being around for years and how they work and how they maintain that code active and, and, and growing. We have uh, webinars, small specialists in Howard, for instance, how the best way of using GPU nodes. GPUs are actually the, the, the standard molecular the simulations right now. So using that in the best way is uh, a really important thing in, in, in the optimization of the code. And also we have simply just uh, scaling uh, analysis from uh, benchmarking of MD and a lot of more of webinars that are just more specialized teams and how to use the tools, how to use the different uh, activity, how to, to follow different activities of the center. And also we have uh, support forums. These are very active. Excuse me, uh, sir, you is one, one minute more, sorry. Yes, yeah, one slide more, no problem. So this is uh, almost the last one. So support forums is about just uh, a place to talk. This has been, replacing all the user community mailing leaks that was in Gromax that were in Haddock and others. So all the uh, conversations between users are channeled to this talk, uh, to, to this uh, uh, support forum, and actually it's really, really active. And as I said, this was the last one, just to, to, to say uh, uh, thanks again for the opportunity, just to present some of the partners, well, all, most of the partners are known, so we have uh, BSC on top, we have also MLE BI, more in the bioinformatics side, Utrek for the, for the Haddock uh, contribution, or some, uh, sorry, Utrek for the, uh, for the Haddock, KTH, with, uh, that is also the coordinator, is uh, providing Gromax, and you have Julik from the quantum mechanics work, and, and also we have, I have to say, that we have Julik, BSC, and I can find it, the EPCC, uh, so, yes, the EPCC from the from Edinburgh and Borg. So we are trying to find uh, the, to fine tune the relation between uh, providers, uh, large scale uh, resources providers, and also uh, pure scientific like IRB of uh, Max Planck in uh, institutes so pure scientific groups with uh, resource providers, with software providers in, in a kind of uh, well-organized uh, activity. So that, that was all. Thank you for listening and open to any questions you like. Thank you so much, Josep Luis, for your presentation. And uh, we are open to receive uh, now uh, 
questions for uh, GWS through the chat. If not, just let me start with a, a short question, GWS. Uh, what kind of companies uh, do you think could benefit more from uh, computational biomedicine? Are you thinking about big pharma companies or, or, or small startups? What type of companies do you think could be most uh, interested in joining your your activity? We actually, we are targeting both. So pharma companies are, are indeed the most uh, relevant targets in the, comp in, the in the private side because uh, they use molecular dynamics, they use modeling quantum. They, these are the kind of tools that are, uh, a pharma company doing research is using every day. So these are our natural uh, targets. And we are discussing things with uh, Pfizer and with the small companies. So actually we have, uh, as I said, we'll tr try to tag tar a little bit the different targets. So there is different uh, level of, uh, of uh, needs. For instance, a large company will probably want to install everything at home and keep working in the, in the internal premises. Or a small company will probably prefer to, to use uh, public resources if possible and to deal more uh, more, more in the uh, more, uh, a closer relations with the comp with the scientific groups in BioXL, but actually, uh, I think we can target both levels. And I see, that, of course, this is uh, the the pharma companies are the, the the most relevant. But I said we we try we, we are talking to both. We have been uh, meeting with uh, large companies, uh, have periodic meetings with those, and that includes large and small companies. 